cool. And we should be recording. Okay. Dope. Um, yeah. So I guess first of all, what bands are you in right now? Like, do you want to explain them a little? Yeah. So like, I'm in. It's kind of hard to say because like I think of it more just like different different projects that of like some have been put on hold because I have friends well not like right now obviously because Omicron is like a whole thing but like it would mainly be like people would be away at college so like Mm -hmm. certain projects would be put on hold um just like while they're while they're out you know so Mm -hmm. but at the moment I'm I'm playing with this guy named Cole Gallagher who's uh from Pasadena he's like a very I don't know how to describe it. His music is very influenced by like Americana and like classic rock, but not exclusively. Like, he kind of draws inspiration from a lot of like roots music, I guess, like a mixture of like blues, classic rock, modern rock, and like even bits of country. Oh. I think it's just a really cool mixture. And like, I've I've only known Cole since like August or so. And, but like, I've been playing with him for a few months now. I kind of consider him the main band i'm in now just because we're consistently gigging and like Mm -hmm. every week or so like there's just always something going on with him and then i have like a couple other projects that i just have started with friends that are now just like somewhat on hold like i have a there's one project i started called carburetum like i started that like 2018 and like we have (laughs) we've only put out one song and we haven't released anything since 2019 because shit has just been yeah wild and like everyone everyone's fucking at school right now so like i don't know i think of them more just like projects because for it to me at least for it to be like a band it has to be like something that's consistently happening and it's like you know so it's more just like when we release music we do and when we don't we don't and like i don't know the other uh i mean there's also another project i have with my friend jack mason who was living in utah the last couple years and he just moved back to la for good Mm -hmm. and so me him and our friend artem are now finally all here so like we're probably going to start doing a lot more stuff uh with a a band we have called idiot burn we have one album out on spotify and we're just kind of hopefully going to try to make some cool shit now that we're all here in person and like make something something cool whatever it is i guess Oh yeah, that's awesome. Um, and fucking, what was the band you were in with, uh, Elliot and Sam? I can't remember what it was called. Oh like, yeah, that was back in high school. And yeah, yeah, that was that was called Usual Haunts, and that was yeah, just kind of like, yeah, that was kind of just my like high school. Pro- I don't know. I kind at the time I just started it because it was like I was like sixteen, and I was just like, oh, I want to like try starting a band now, but it was a lot more just like just the desire to start a band and it was definitely more just like I don't know because when I started just kind of discovering the LA music scene I was like I kind of want to just like be a part of this so and I just kind of developed songwriting like based on that and what I was like listening to at the time and then I never I I originally had plans to keep that going at some point just because like that was kind of all my music like I was pretty much writing all the songs and like it just never ends. I, I think it's pretty much like done now because it just, I don't know, everyone went to college and it was like, I don't know. I just feel like that it belonged at like in high school and like it did, you know, what it had to do. It was a good couple of years and now it's like I've moved on musically to a lot of different stuff and I feel like there's no point in just like keeping that going necessarily, you know, so. But it, it was fun. I mean, Elliot was yeah. in that and Sam and all the like it, the one thing it did give me was like all my a lot of my like high school friendships and like connections and stuff that I made outside of school were kind of thanks to that band and just like I don't know I credit it with a lot of earlier like a lot of my early musical like formation I guess yeah definitely I mean I just remember you guys had the best energy I just love going to guys' shows so much because it was really? just yeah. like Elliot was so focused you know what I mean and Sam was just going yeah. crazy yeah even now that's like, why just that's why it in the front. Yeah. same thing I mean that's why I love playing with Elliot and Ziggy particularly because they're both like I mean they're both like yeah, that's right. Ziggy was in it too. yeah and they're because they're both just like so into it and that's kind of I didn't necessarily have a goal with the music but it was definitely to like both explore like songwriting but also I definitely wanted to have like 
a live energy which is kind of something i still chase now like especially like any you know band that i'm in that i'm like writing music for because i don't like write music for cole's band he's just a guy who i like i'm in his live band and we play his songs and we get and you know it's still fun because we get to you know perform on stage and do whatever it is that we do but like yeah ultimately it's like i still like i still always have a love for like writing my own music or like creating music with a group because like we can control what it's about and it's like it's just kind of all about expelling energy i guess yeah no totally that's awesome um so i guess like yeah how'd you meet cole like yeah you said you met him recently I, back in August. yeah really really recently actually it was kind of just uh this guy i know james fall who i met when like when did i meet him i guess like 2018 um through a mutual friend we have and he he came to like a couple of usual haunt shows and we kind of just had been friends for the last couple of years like jamming together and he he's actually in uh carburetum which is like one of the other bands it's kind of on hold right now but he basically he was playing bass for cole in his live band because i guess he had mutual friends with him or like he grew up somewhere around him in like the pasadena area and he basically when so james goes to berkeley and he was like i'm you know i'm gonna need someone to sub for me while i'm out at berkeley so he asked me if i wanted to do that because of course since moving back here like i've only been living back in la like for good since the start of the pandemic so like any chance i can get to like play a show or do anything yeah you know it's like i'm gonna take that opportunity so i basically was just like yeah of course like i'm down to do that so i said like yeah I'll, i'll sub for him and then there were just some like lineup changes with the band and like I think someone who was playing guitar like two of the guitarists left or something so James took on rhythm guitar and then I kind of became the full-time bassist and then James did go to Berkeley and we had like one or two little lineup changes but like it was just weird because he was this guy who I didn't really know I saw him play once just to like go see James play at a bar and then like mm-hmm. I was just all of a sudden like playing with him and it was weird too because like we ended up playing within a span of like a couple months I went from like not knowing him to like being in his first music video to like then we got to fucking fly to New York to play Borderland Festival and like we played the oh, main stage awesome. it was, yeah it was pretty wild because like I I remember I was just jealous as hell because James was gonna like get to go play that and I was like oh that's so sick dude yeah. and he was like oh I'm probably gonna this is like before I before he moved down to like guitar I was just like oh man that's so sick like he's like gonna take the train from Berkeley and he's gonna go to New York and like play this festival and then little and James actually ended up ultimately not playing that because his Berkeley schedule didn't allow but like I had no idea that I was gonna get to go do that and it kind of just happened within the span of like two months so we just been gigging and gigging and then I was just the bass player kind of out of nowhere Mm -hmm. so but like over time I found my role in it and it's fun I really enjoy playing with him and his music is really cool so and we have some really cool stuff coming up too we got um what is it? i don't know i'm not like not supposed to talk about it but like i feel like it's more of a surprise if i don't but let's just say we have like a little little youtube thingy of some kind coming out oh, that's in exciting. the near future like like not a music video i'll just say that much but yeah oh, that's really exciting okay cool yeah. definitely we'll keep an eye out for that um and i'm excited for that <laughs> that's really exciting it'll be a surprise um okay cool um yeah and so like are you so you were going to portland uh state yeah. if i'm not mistaken right yeah are you still like or just online no so i was i i finished like the we were, we were on the quarter system so i guess i finished like the end or like so basically i came home for spring break 2020 Mm-hmm. of my like sophomore year and there was only like the spring quarter left so I kind of was just like I came the, right as that was happening right as spring break was starting was when everything kind of started locking down and I kind of knew it was very indefinite like how yeah. long I was going to be in LA so at the time because we knew fucking nothing about the virus we were just like all right I'm just going to stay here because like my parents are here we're all home I'm just going to be here for however long I need to be here and I'll just do it online so it went online and I finished my last um, my last term, like the last quarter and of my sophomore year. And at some point, I don't remember like 
what exactly led me into this but I was just like I kind of wanted to be back in LA like not that I don't like Portland because I love Portland it's like probably my second favorite city after LA but like just in terms of a school like for the career I want to like have in music I feel like I need to be here and like Mm -hmm. all of my social and music connections are kind of all in this general area and like Portland is fun and like I'll always have a place for it in my heart but it's like you can't really go anywhere you can't really do anything there you can just kind of like I was studying music and it was it was fun and like I met cool people and I still like have friends up there and I have a whole kind of separate network up there but that was the that was the end of my time at PSU like summer 2020 so and then actually I haven't been in school since then but like my plan is to finish I just have to find the right place to like transfer to you because I'm not even entirely sure like what I want to study like something in music but like my priority is more just kind of doing it and like gigging and like networking because the amount it's just it's insane because with if I was in Portland I wouldn't have gotten to do any of the stuff that I have with Cole or like start this new project with Jack it's got like some really cool stuff that we're going to be doing and like I don't know it's just it feels like it's more right for me to focus on doing that and then when I have the time get back to school because like yeah I don't really care too much about I used to care a lot more like you know what year am I going to graduate but yeah. like, but it's ultimately you just kind of realize over time it doesn't really matter in the end so I don't know I'm kind of in a limbo right now but like it I'll be finishing sometime like in you know sometime in the near future yeah in Los Angeles. unless something better comes your way right I'm yeah because like I kind of I feel like I can't not be here you yeah know, no so. and it sounds like you have really cool things going for you too and that's awesome um, yeah I mean I'm hoping I'm just kind of like keeping it I'm taking it as it comes and I'm trying not to like think about the future too yeah. much because like I don't know I'm just kind of taking it step by step but it feels like right now LA is like the right place for me to be to at least have a chance of doing it for a living or however I can end up doing it you know you can never really predict what's going to happen but totally yeah I mean like Portland definitely has more of like a like small town energy you know yeah yeah um yeah and also just definitely growing up in LA like it's such a trip just like people we know you know like and they're just they've blown up and it's like oh if I ever saw them at a party I could definitely like talk to them or whatever you know yeah I mean it's 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 that yeah I mean Portland has the one thing Portland did have was just like people who in general were just more authentic as people like you know LA is very clicked out at least like yeah not everybody like when you meet the cool like really cool genuine people they are really cool people but like everywhere you know it's kind of like a 50 50 you don't know if this person's going to be like fake or just like a nice person and when you go to Portland everyone is just kind of being themselves everyone's very chill and there's no like no one's compelled to be anything other than themselves really so it's really easy to like connect with people and it's not really like a hard thing so that's one thing I do kind of miss about it but like I feel like maybe one day I'll like settle in Portland you know just to like once I've done whatever I can like in LA I feel like that might be where I end up but I don't know. Once you want a quieter life kind of. Yeah because it's just like I'm just so easy it's just much easier there and it's like chiller I guess yeah and it's gorgeous I mean just like living in the nature like my mom moved out there um a few years oh yeah I remember that yeah yeah um she lives on like off just so like near Burnside um she used to bro she used to live in um Rafi's building actually the same oh shit yeah like they didn't live there at the same time but like she used to live there and then we moved it um okay but um she moved to um, she's primarily living in like um, what's it called Hayden Island so it's like in between oh. Vancouver and Portland it's interesting yeah okay yeah it's a cool spot um, yeah. but yeah um, sorry my throat's been like oh oh no I feel it dude I've been like my throat actually hasn't felt too bad but I've had a lot of mucus in here and like it's weird because I consider the day my symptoms started was just the day I had I had a frog in my throat all day and it was just all day I was like oh, 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 oh. Yeah. And I'm like and even now it's still kind of bugging me so yeah no for real um okay what's like the best gig you've ever played? like which one really like 
yeah imprinted you or just like launch something else or whatever it is yeah the best gig yeah i mean off the top of my head i want to say borderlands just because that was like yeah that was a major tell festival. me more about it I, yeah i mean there's other cool gigs i play i like every gig because i just like playing music is never not fun because you're kind of just like i like it because you like have to be in the moment and you have to you're letting any stress or anything you have built inside of you is like you have a chance to like escape from it or like let it out when you do it so i kind of like any show but like borderlands was cool because it's just like i never had like an exact idea of like what i wanted to end up doing musically but like it kind of was like a little not like a wake-up call but it made me feel like okay like this is doing something big like a major festival is like it's a possibility and it's not like some it is like it's something that is attainable if you work hard enough and if you do you know it's it it just kind of let me know like it is possible and it was cool too because we were supposed to play like a smaller stage and then I think Cole's manager like his agent had some kind of like leverage somehow and we got (laughs) we ended up playing the main stage which was cool we were the first band of the day um and then the closing band that day was like the revivalists and then there's uh there was this other band uh Jason Isbell and the 400 unit they're a pretty big they like I think they won they either were nominated for or won a Grammy for like best Americana album or something at the Grammys a couple years ago and like oh that's dope his band I think recorded some stuff with Cole um but it was just cool because we had like backstage access and like we were the first band on the main stage of that day and it was just cool to like uh, it was just like such a weird world because we'd gone from just like you know pulling up to some random bar or wherever we were playing in LA and like loading our amps in and meeting the opening band just like oh hey man that's you know like oh, you guys were awesome and like <laughs> that, that that etiquette and then like it went from that to like riding a fucking golf cart to like <laughs> like it was weird because I looked up pictures of the stage and I'm like oh yeah like that's pretty cool and then like when we actually rolled up and we're like going to load our shit in I my heart for like a second just kind of sank I was like oh shit because you know when you see those like those like arching side monitors that go like down the sides of the stage oh yeah sure you know you know that's when it's like a like big stage and I was like oh (laughs) shit and but ultimately it was fun and we played like an hour and like we were the kind of band to open up the whole day on that stage which is just pretty wild and I don't know I consider that more or less my like best gig just in terms of like how big of an occasion it was but like I you know there's certain gigs where it's like oh I thought I played really good tonight versus like another night where you're like oh like I kind of fucked up a lot but I don't know I try not to think about it too much but that's yeah that that's probably like the the biggest you could say or the best one in my in my experience so far yeah that's awesome like that must have been so fun like how many people were on stage do you think how many people were playing in the band in the band there's like there's always between five and six people um because like there's i don't know like when people sometimes we like don't like when james went to berkeley we didn't necessarily have like a second guitarist so like uh like for borderlands we got this guy barry billings who's this guy who's like i think he's like 60 or something who like recorded on Cole's music and he just came up this dude's like a school teacher in Alabama he just (laughs) came up just for the just for the show and just like stayed with us at the Airbnb and like he just killed it played like some sick blues licks and just did lead and then just went home and that's (laughs) just like a one-off so Barry Billings Barry Billings he's a I think he uh, if any if anyone knows who Jason Isbell is I think he he taught him guitar had some kind of influence on him I don't know but that's yeah tough. he's he's a sick dude very uh very chill but yeah there's like five or five or six people in the band at any given time usually that's awesome um yeah that's so much fun i can't even imagine like playing at a festival like that like just would seem so overwhelming like i don't know i, I yeah. feel like i couldn't focus on the music like i feel like that'd be so hard just to focus on my instrument um yeah i mean it's kind of in some ways it's like that but it's more just like it's just a weird mixture of like it's all it's pretty much all excitement until you're on the verge of being about to do it and then it's like (laughs) it's nervousness but it's not like 
it doesn't like petrify you because it's I guess mainly when you, you just have to like you have to remind yourself it's about the music and the more you like because here's the thing like we've played so many gigs as a band and it's like I don't it's like I know the songs I know who I am as a bass yeah. player and I know how we get to like I get to have fun on stage and ultimately it's like I'm gonna do that wherever I'm gonna get to do it like no matter how big the stage is you know so if I just like if I get into that mindset it kind of just goes away because I'm like I'm not like trying to impress these people I'm like doing what I do and like they can enjoy it or not but like ultimately this is for like if I'm gonna do this I'm gonna have fun and I'm not gonna care too much about what they're thinking you know yeah totally no that's fun. I think that's a great attitude um yeah so like just in general I feel like you used to play a lot of house shows obviously and then yeah. obviously now you're playing more um like bars and clubs and shit like that it sounds yeah. like um which do you prefer because I feel like they're definitely very different atmospheres obviously yeah they can be different I I mean it just kind of depends because I actually haven't played a house show in like maybe yeah. since 2018 because like oh really well because like when I was in Portland I wasn't playing with any bands I was just like a music student who just gosh you know and I went I went to shows and like I still go to house shows but like because because I came back from Portland as the pandemic was starting there was too many like opportunities to actually go play um I've played a couple well, I've played a couple actually there's I'm in this little like I guess you'd describe it as like experimental garage punk band with uh, some friends, including James, uh, who plays drums in that band called Two Hour Shower. And the whole, <laughs> it's just a complete, not, a, not, I don't know, shit show isn't the right word, but it's just like <laughs> our goal is to just have fun. And we don't really give a fuck about like, we're like, basically if like, if we want to play, like even with just a couple of days notice, we'll be like, oh, you know, we'll make a flyer and be like, we're going to play at Seb's. Sebastian's like the, the guitar player will be like we're gonna play at his in his garage or something like that and we you know it's the kind of shit we just put together an impromptu show even if it's like a live stream and we'll just play and it's literally just us going insane and just having fun and there's like this element of like theatricality to it I guess that makes it a lot more fun and like performative because you just let loose and like but that was kind of the only house show I've played and probably since 2018 we played one or two of those but I prefer I mean it's hard to say because like house shows are cool because it's very intimate but at the same time you can get anywhere like you know you there are house shows where there's maybe like three people watching you or there could be 50 people watching you and whereas but at the same time it could also be that way at a bar you could be at a bar where you're playing to like five people or you could be playing to like a hundred people, you know, it just kind of depends. And they're both fun in their own ways. And I think especially a bar or a club is better because there's, they put like a lot, not a lot of house shows put effort into like the sound system per se. Or yeah, for like gear. Yeah. Which isn't like necessarily a bad thing. Cause I, you know, I'm a big fan of like adapting to the environment and like doing whatever to make it sound the best, but like, it's just so much easier at bars. Cause like, they've taken care of this shit and you don't have to worry about anything except like I've kind of like noticed the last couple of years like the best thing is to just really get like minimize the amount of gear and shit. like I had my pedal board made up so like everything's plugged in all I got to do is like carry it with me plug it in and it's ready to go and all I have to do is carry this thing and plug it in and then the sound guy does whatever he does mm -hmm. but if I go to a house show it's just like and plus especially if you're in like a really small space it's just like it's just so much stress but at the same time I don't know I don't it's hard to say if I prefer one over the other I just I think I just like shows that are like where people are having fun regardless of like the space or anything you know like people whether it's in a bar or it's a house if there's people who are like genuinely invested in what you're doing I think that's what matters so I guess whatever that falls under yeah you know it can happen at, at both settings I think at either yeah that's awesome um and then yeah I mean have you been to any like really good shows recently or any just that stood out yeah I went to I went to see 100 Gex in like uh when did I see November I went I almost went by myself but they were playing at a Shrine Expo Hall and then in a LA. friend of, yeah and then a friend of mine managed to get a ticket like 
right before so like she came and joined me and like but in the end you know I could have gone to that show like by myself and had the best time because it was like it was so refreshing because the last time I was in like a mosh pit that was like that intensity was so long ago and everyone was just so front like some you know I wasn't even like I wasn't like high or anything there I was just having a good time because I was like this is just like the first major concert I get to go to out mm-hmm. of the pandemic and I'm like I'm gonna fucking enjoy this and like everybody was just like jumping around and grabbing on each other and just singing the lyrics to each other and like they didn't even know each other and like that that was just really fun like the end like regardless of what anyone thinks about 100 yaks like the energy there was just kind of insane and it's like it was just so friendly and I think it was the perfect concert to kind of like bring me back into the world like for for real following the pandemic and I feel like there's I've definitely gone to some other shows and I'm trying to think like that was def- that's like the like that was my first like major major concert mm-hmm. I guess oh you know actually no I did see I drove up to San Francisco to see uh Idols oh that's a couple of friends yeah that was a really fun show that was in I want to see them so bad November. dude it's so oh my god they're phenomenal I think those are the only two like big concerts I've been to in a while but I have I have tickets for like a few in the coming months so oh, that's exciting anything you want to mention um let's see I'm seeing the band I don't know if you know them Black Country New Road I don't they're they're really cool they're from Britain they're part of that whole like I don't know what you call it (laughs) there's people that call the scene like post Brexit core (laughs) that's like that's like just I don't know whatever you consider like idols like Black Midi and like yeah (laughs) Shane Fontaine's DC like I don't know but they're one of those bands and they I don't even know how to describe them they're very it's like if you could imagine a darker version of Arcade Fire in the sense that it's like (laughs) it's very like there's a lot of instruments and it's like orchestral but it's very i don't know i would just recommend listening to them they're called black country new road but i'm seeing them in yeah no they're really cool and i'm seeing them in uh in march oh yeah i'm seeing uh jacob collier who's like a very he's like this jazz not he's not even just jazz he's just this like he's just like the smartest musician on the planet like yeah in terms of music theory like he's the kind of guy who's like he has savant level skills but he's not like a savant he just like has studied that much and he's like he's just unbelievable he's just like a master of music theory and just does jazz and a bunch of other stuff and I was supposed to see him in 2020 and then that got postponed because of COVID so I think I'm I have to go up to Portland because I think they're still going to honor my ticket for that I hope they do um off the top of my head that's what I can think of right now for like upcoming gigs that's dope um i just got tickets for injury reserve just announced a show and there so i saw them a minute ago but their um opener is fucking black midi bro i'm like oh that's what the fuck crazy like crazy that's that's a cool mix though i like i mean it's not the first thing i'd think of but i also can't imagine that yeah i can't imagine it like not going together yeah so. no so i'm hyped for that that's like one of the best shows i've ever been to highly recommend injury reserve um they're awesome live and then yeah i think i went to this same gex tour um i s- saw it in portland funnily enough oh um, yeah yeah i can't remember the theater but i remember the opener was a magician um and he just like came on stage and like juggled and like did just like magic and everyone was like what the fuck and we were all just like talking and hanging out and then like oh gex came on and it was just like crazy mosh pit but who opened for them just out of curiosity cause... it was in la it was actually it was this other artist named underscores who's kind of part of their same like hyper pop ish i haven't heard scene. of them they're really cool and they it's just like one person but it, they were really good but the magician kind of sounds almost more suited to like the gex i don't know why yeah, because it, it's so, it's so like them to just do, i mean fucking dylan like wears like a wizard outfit so yeah like it was have, like a clown magician too so he had like the little like you know flower that like shot yeah. water and like it was great it was amazing that's awesome um yeah and no, it was fantastic um awesome so i mean that's basically all the questions i had like um 
yeah i mean so yeah what's coming up next like immediate future like um show ep what's what's on the mind i know you mentioned like the youtube project that you can't really talk about anymore. yeah well it's i mean it's not that i can't talk about it i just feel like it's more of a surprise if i don't yeah. but it's and obviously time, people can keep up with all this on your instagram um, yeah 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 I, and i'll drop a link to that and sure stuff. yeah i mean i'll give you links to like all the like like cole gallagher instagram and stuff perfect um, immediate future i don't know i like uh cole is i think gonna try to put out an ep sometime in the spring because he's got like he's got a bunch of songs recorded and i think that's when he's planning to put it out and like i didn't we the live band we didn't play on any of that but we are like the live band so we perform that stuff live with him Mm -hmm. and uh you're playing bass with him right sorry yeah okay yeah i'm playing bass and and like february we got a cool thing uh cole's cole's got a really cool thing coming out a live i'll put it's a live session of sorts i'll put it that way um that's cool. yeah and you just have like periodic shows right like pretty much every week yeah well periodic. actually so we were like actually starting in like november december we started doing a residency at this oh, place really? yeah we had at this place in pasadena called the mix which is like a bar and grill um and it's the usually it's like every tuesday night which would normally be their like tuesday night blues jam night mm-hmm. but like we've sort of become the house band for that we provide That's all the awesome. gear yeah it's fun and it's cool because it's not just like limited to it's not just blues you know it's more just like a bunch of musicians show up and we play whatever we feel like and people it's it's fun we've been doing that for like eight weeks and then me along with like a few other members of the band actually have all tested positive for COVID like this last week. So we were going to do it like this past Tuesday and we didn't, but it's going to be happening again soon, I think. So that's at the mix in Pasadena, M-I-X-X. Word. Um, in terms of Cole, I think that's it. I mean, yeah, we're playing. Oh yeah, we're playing the, let me look at my calendar. We are playing the Viper Room on january 14th that sounds fancy it's pretty sick it's where at river phoenix od in like 1990 <laughs> whatever so that's the if you want to come see that uh, historic landmark you can come there <laughs> and there's a we're playing molly malone's which is this bar on i think on fairfax <laughs> dude on that the- that bar kills me because it's Malone and Molly. It's both their names. It blows my mind. And there's one in Australia. I found what? one. It's an Irish pub. It's in Australia. Is Molly it owned Malone's. by like is it owned by like the same people or is it? It looks exactly the same, bro. It was a trip. Damn. Um, that's awesome though. I definitely yeah, I love that spot. Them. Yeah. So yeah, we're playing at Molly Malone's on the 20, I guess the 28th. Um Bro, are you getting good food from these gigs? Like, are they food? Yeah, they give you free food. Sometimes it just kind of depends. Actually, I feel like we actually don't get the only times we really really were given food that was like substantial. Like, oh yeah, like here's food for you guys. Was like we did three gigs. Some of the first gigs I played with Cole actually were like three gigs that we actually we opened for the Plain White Tees. (laughs) <laughs> that they were awesome i know and it's but they were at like do you remember the uh the canyon club have you ever been there no i haven't it's like it's this weird network of clubs around la we're not even in la just kind of like in it, their surrounding areas that's owned by this one really rich guy and like it's almost like a sub they call it it's like a supper club kind of but it's weird because people will play shows there and like usual hans actually played there once but it's like they have a lot of a mixture of like cover bands and like the you know those like Burbank Music Academy bands yeah. that like you kind of get put into and you got to play a show like that's where they do those <laughs> it's a cool place though but like it was weird because we opened for like plain white tees which at least to me are still a somewhat you know important band and they we it was weird because everyone was like oh I have to purchase dinner to watch a show here <laughs> so but they they gave us like pretty good food that they like gave us like like here you can have like lasagna or chicken so like oh cool thank you and they gave you like a salad and shit with it that's dope then they gave us pizza one time and borderlands had some pretty good food i mean we had a whole yeah i bet they hooked it up oh there. dude we had a whole yeah. like green room not even like green room but it was like 
it take if the festival is on like this like farmland called uh what's the name of the actual it's called like knox farm state park and it's just like this huge like acreage like area and it's like yeah it's in like northern new york right like yeah it's in buffalo it's on like the the town is technically called east aurora which is like right outside of buffalo um but they like set us up in these like the building that's called the stables is like where all of our like green rooms where we just have a couple chairs and some snacks but then you know like a big room at the end that we like shared with like the revivalists and like molly tuttle who's a really cool like countryish bluegrass blue bluegrass bluegrass guitarist um and they just had a whole like you know chicken dinner and like pasta and like salad and potatoes and like different brownies and cookies and shit and like plus a full bar and like nobody cared which is weird because like nobody in the bar like i don't think anyone there seemed to care how old you were like i was 21 but like cole was 19 and i think i was the only one in the band who was like over 20 like 21 so i was like all right like i guess they're not going to say anything we can just party so that's great yeah um so wait, you said you have covid right now or getting over it how is that i'm curious it's, i still haven't had it it's not bad it's i mean do i thought i wasn't gonna get it because i went the whole time without really even having a scare but just the last week or two has been wild in la because like I like it's at a point where everybody I know either has tested positive or has had a scare because someone they know tested positive and like they saw them at a certain point because it's it's like everywhere dude no it's insane Um, yeah it's it hasn't been too bad I for me it was really just like I remember on like Wednesday afternoon I had kind of like a like mucus in my throat but it wasn't anything to like worry about and then it was raining that night I remember like really heavily and you know how they say to like don't you know go out in the cold weather or like you'll Mm -hmm. get sick or I don't know if that was a factor but like that night like I came home at like midnight one o'clock like I had like a kind of a dry cough and like that's kind of all it's been it was just kind of like a bunch of mucus in my chest and my throat and like a bit of a dry cough and like sometimes I had a low fever but it never like reached over a hundred degrees which was kind of cool that's good yeah it's honestly it just kind of feels like a chest cold and like my throat isn't sore and I still have my taste and smell just like I don't know I'm kind of congested and like yeah. it's been fine though I mean my parents I mean my parents were already like look we've already if we were ex- like if we're going to be exposed we've already been exposed so I didn't yeah. have to like stay in my room but like I haven't left today was actually the first time in like a week I've left my actual house I went on like a little walk with the mask on like because I've just been like staying in the house except for like you know I'd step into the yard every now and then but like that's it just been weird like because some people have to stay in like one room and I just don't think I could ever do that you know yeah and I mean it must be such a trip like you thought you were done with the pandemic like for the most part you know what I mean or at least I did like it really felt like just like seeing the other side and then it was like and then shit just like well because it's the winter time and like everyone gets sick now and then like it just all came at the worst time dude yeah. And like because I had like I had like four gigs this month and I, I'm lucky it happened when it did because if I had to quarantine through like half this month I would be like so pissed off but yeah. I don't know I'm grateful though it hasn't been too bad I have my I've had my booster since like September October so I'm feeling fine so yeah and I mean like school yeah for me school just went online until the end of January until further notice so yeah there's that I have, then... I have a feeling once it's like February March things are gonna like improve as it gets close to the summer and the spring i think so and like i tried to get a booster shot and it was like two month wait it was like the end of february and i was like that's crazy um which is good that people are getting the boosters but yeah crazy Um, luckily through my school like they just came out with a thing i can get in like two weeks but still like crazy times yeah i know some places in la are doing like walk-ins but like I got one early because I'm like a food service worker, but I also have like Crohn's disease. So I think I technically qualified, even though it like doesn't yeah. really affect me. I was like, okay. And the thing is they don't check. They don't like, they don't last for like a work ID or any kind of proof that you're like immunocompromised. You kind of just fill out a form and they're like, okay, I just pulled up to CVS and they did it for me. So yeah, I have right here. 14 day change in COVID cases from New York Times is up 254 percent 
in 14 days. Yeah, like, honestly, that sounds about right, though. Yeah. Like, our daily case record in the whole country is like a million or some shit like that. Yeah. No, it's wow. crazy. Um, yeah. But yeah, feel better. I mean, sounds like you're feeling Thank fine, you. but like still feel better. You know, good luck. Yeah, I my quarantine period's almost done. I think I got like another three days, but I'm doing I'm doing okay actually. Every day I feel a little bit better. So I'm surprised I haven't been coughing this whole time. If I can be honest with you, like, <laughs> I don't know. I feel pretty good. So that's great. Um, yeah, that's all I had. Unless you want to mention anything else really quick. Or, yeah. Um. Not off the top of my head. I mean, listen to Cole's music. Listen to a. I don't. I. I have this band called Idiot Burn that I'm in with a couple homies, and we have an album on Spotify called uh, "And It All Comes Full Circle." Uh, that was a little tape we put together over quarantine, just to like. We did that all remotely and just overdubbed stuff and put it out. Mm-hmm. But now we're gonna start like, writing stuff in person, and it's gonna be a lot more instrumental based. But uh. Feel free to listen to that on Spotify under Idiot Burn. You can listen to the one Carburetum song that's out called Kismet that came out September 2019, and we may not release anything else. I don't know. Oh, and Two Hour Shower on Spotify. I'll give you all these links, so I don't have to list them. Off yeah, right no, now, and I'll throw them. Um, yeah. All yeah. right, cool. Thanks, Martin. Um, Absolutely. All right, yeah. Thank you guys for watching.